CNN, the major thrust of new coronavirus cases in the United States is in the South and West, where officials say more young people are ignoring social distancing measures and testing positive. Young people are more likely to have milder outcomes from coronavirus, but they can still infect others who are more at risk. With younger age of recent infections in at least some places such as Florida, expect a lower death rate in this wave, until the 20 to 40 year olds who are infected today go on to infect others, Dr. Tom Frieden, former director of the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, said on Twitter. Dr. Anthony Fauci, the nation's top infectious disease expert, told Axios that the recent high number of cases in young people is not surprising. Like Frieden, he warned of what's to come. They get infected first, then they come home, and then they infect the older people. The older people get the complications, and then they go to the hospitals, Fauci said. The death rate always lags several weeks behind the infection rate. The focus on young coronavirus positive patients comes as nearly half of states are reporting a rise in new positive cases and some continue to break records in their daily reported cases. Florida on Monday surpassed 100,000 total coronavirus cases, according to data released by the Florida Department of Health. The increases highlight America's systemic failure to control the pandemic, a sharp contrast to its trajectory in Europe and Asia. There, coronavirus cases sharply increased in early 2020, were met with fierce efforts to stop its spread and have since rapidly declined. In the U.S., the first wave of coronavirus still isn't over. In fact, cases took just a small dip and are now increasing months after the pandemic hit American shores. I don't think we have the luxury of talking about a second wave right now because we have not gotten out of the first wave, CNN chief medical correspondent Dr. Sanjay Gupta said. And it's not clear that we will get out of the first wave. Instead of actually having a true ebb and flow, it may just be micro and macro peaks for the foreseeable future. The pandemic shows no signs of weakening in the U.S., said Michael Osterholm, head of the Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy at the University of Minnesota in Minneapolis. I think this is more like a forest fire. I don't think that this is going to slow down, Osterholm told NBC's Chuck Todd during an appearance on Meet the Press on Sunday. I think that wherever there's wood to burn, this fire's going to burn, and right now we have a lot of susceptible people, Osterholm said. Right now, I don't see this slowing down through the summer or into the fall. I don't think we're going to see one, two and three waves. I think we're going to just see one very, very difficult forest fire of cases. Masks and social distancing. Across the U.S., experts are highlighting the need for social distancing and face covers. But parts of the country remain divided on wearing face masks in public, and more officials have had to consider making face covers in public a requirement. Masking has become controversial. It shouldn't be, Dr. Scott Gottlieb, former commissioner of the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, said on CBS, Face the Nation, Sunday. It's a simple intervention. It's a collective action we can all take to help protect our fellow citizens and also protect ourselves and try to reopen the economy safely. As those discussions take place, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says it will soon make an updated recommendation on the public health benefits on masks, a senior agency official told CNN. The CDC has so far been conducting a scientific review on the topic, and a senior official with knowledge of the review says researchers are studying whether masks are not only good for source control and keeping you from giving it to others, but we're also seeing if masks are going to protect you from getting COVID-19 yourself. Dr. Zeke Emanuel, who was a health care advisor to President Barack Obama and is a current advisor to Joe Biden's presidential campaign, said the initial resistance to widespread mask usage was wrong. Closing down businesses, it's clear what the cost is. Wearing a mask, there's no cost. And I think we got it wrong, he said. Young groups testing positive for coronavirus. Man says he's lost family to virus. Why he's not wearing a mask. 329. Across the South, some officials are raising alarm about an increased number of younger people testing positive for the virus. In Texas, the governor said last week people under 30 made up a majority of new coronavirus cases in several counties. 
He said that increase in young infected people could be related to Memorial Day parties, visits to bars or other gatherings. And in Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis said Saturday cases are shifting in a radical direction toward populations in their 20s and 30s. Those younger groups, he said, are mostly asymptomatic and don't require clinical attention. Experts have raised alarm about Florida's climbing cases, saying the state could become the next U.S. coronavirus epicenter. On Saturday, Florida reported 4,049 new cases, the most reported in a single day. States doing better and states doing worse. There are 23 states seeing a rise in new reported cases compared to the previous week, according to data from Johns Hopkins University, led by California, Texas, Florida and Arizona. In California, the number of people hospitalized with coronavirus is the highest it's been since the beginning of the pandemic. Across the state, 3,574 people were hospitalized Saturday. The state also reported the most new cases in a single day, 4,515, since the pandemic start, according to data from the state's health department. California Governor Gavin Newsom announced last week residents were required to wear a face covering in high-risk settings, including indoor public space, public transportation or while seeking medical care. In Texas, one of the first states to push forward with reopening, one mayor said he wished the state reopened more slowly while following coronavirus restrictions. When the governor started reopening, I wish he had done it a little slowly so we could have seen the numbers in each one of the phases before we moved on to the next phase, Austin Mayor Steve Adler said Sunday night. Arizona, where President Trump plans to travel on Tuesday, continues to see its new case numbers climb. The state averaged about 2,412 new reported cases per day over the week ending June 21, up about 94 percent from the previous seven-day period, according to a CNN analysis of data from Johns Hopkins University. Meanwhile, 17 states are reporting a decline in new cases. They are Alabama, Alaska, Connecticut, Illinois, Louisiana, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Mississippi, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, South Dakota and Vermont. In New York City, once the epicenter of the crisis, the second phase of reopening began Monday. The phase two reopening means outdoor dining, barbershops and hair salons, playgrounds, offices and curbside retail stores can welcome customers. With cases so low in the state but rising elsewhere, Governor Andrew Cuomo said New York may consider forcing visitors from high transmission states to quarantine upon arrival.